Today, I'm gonna to talk about what associate product managers actually do inside of tech companies, share some tips on how to become a great APM, and then at the end, I'll talk about what you can do to stand out as an APM candidate. I was an APM for two years at SeatGeek, which is a live events ticketing app. The first feature I ever launched while I was an APM was called Trending Events. Basically, on the home Discover feed, you'd be able to see what events, whether it's concerts, baseball games, or whatever else, were trending in your area. I partnered with the data science team to actually create an algorithm them to determine which events were trending and shifting places up and down in the list. Then I worked with a designer to figure out how we can display the events and their moves up and down in an easy to understand way. And finally, I work with the native mobile engineers to actually implement the feature on the iOS and Android app. To this day, it's a really prominent feature on Seeking's homepage, which is really exciting. Hopefully hearing this gets you pumped up about the APM role. You're really able to jump into a tech organization and get your hands dirty, creating exciting functionality. So to step back, an associate product manager is basically a junior or entry-level product manager. It's basically the first role in the product management career path. After that, APMs become product managers, senior PMs, lead or staff PMs, directors of product, VPs of product, and eventually some go on to become chief product officers. In terms of your day-to-day -day as an associate product manager, the first thing I want to mention is that you won't be alone. When I talk to aspiring PMs, people get anxious that once they become an APM, they'll be expected to make major decisions all by themselves without any input. While APMs do get to make decisions, there's always a support system around them to help. That may be a tech lead, a PM, a senior PM, or a manager. In general, you'll have someone more experienced guiding you through the decision-making process. The second thing to mention is that the scope of your product will be manageable for someone just starting out. Unless you're working in a very small startup, you likely won't be responsible for a huge portion of the overall product. This means that you don't need to be worried about being responsible for a huge area of the company that may seem scary or intimidating if you're just starting out. Your manager will likely make sure that the area you're responsible for is reasonable for a junior PM who is just getting started in their product career. The third thing to mention is that the APM role is really meant to help people transition into product and learn the ropes. APMs do everything that a PM would do, but at a smaller scale. APMs support building out a roadmap, but wouldn't be expected to completely manage it by themselves. They support defining how a team may want to update an existing feature, but wouldn't launch a new product completely by themselves. Companies hire smart APMs so that they can train them to become excellent PMs, and over time, they'll gain more and more responsibility. They also help companies move faster if the PMs and senior PMs are swamped with work and need extra hands. For example, APMs are able to dedicate their full time to doing in-depth competitor analysis or assisting with user interviews and synthesis where a senior PM may be too busy. To learn more about what a day in the life of a PM really looks like, check out my video on that. Next up, I wanted to share some tips when it comes to being an awesome APM. Number one is to know the product better than everyone else. Really get into the weeds with it. What are the edge cases that exist? An edge case is basically a rare or unusual scenario in your product, but one that still needs to be handled in some way. What does the product look like in different states, like when a user is logged in versus logged out? Really get to know the ins and out of your product area. Number two is that if you don't understand something that comes up, dive really really deep into learning about it. If your team starts talking about a conversion funnel and you don't know what that is, jump onto Google or ChatGPT for an explanation. There are plenty of resources online to help you learn. Number three is that you should learn to be okay with making mistakes. You will inevitably make them as an APM and that is totally normal and to be expected. Own up to them and acknowledge to your team that you're still learning, as are they. If you make a mistake, consider writing it down so you can remember it for the future and not make the same mistake twice. Number four is that you learn the best by doing things repeatedly. Whether it is managing a launch process and communications to internal stakeholders or doing a user interview, the way you get really good at it is by doing it over and over again. Make sure you're continuing to learn and improve yourself over time. You know the saying, 1% better every day. Number five is to build really strong relationships with the designer and engineers on your team. Learn how they like to work best, how they like to communicate. Ask them in what specific ways can you help them make their jobs easier. Building relationships with your team is absolutely critical if you want to advance your PM career. Number six is that you should really deeply understand the users that are using your product. Who are they? Where are they? What do they do outside of your product? What are their pain points? Why are they even using your product in the first place? Really get to know all of this about your users and you will become a lot better and more effective as an APM. Okay, now that you know what it takes to be an awesome APM, I'll share some tips and tricks to help you stand out and kickstart your APM career.
here. Number one is to learn from the best. Follow different leaders in the product management space, like Lenny Richitsky, for example. Read books, articles, listen to podcasts, and really immerse yourself in the world of product so that you can speak the same language as existing PMs. Number two is to work on a side project and create a product portfolio. Demonstrate your passion for product and your skills by actually creating something, like a no-code app or a website that showcases your understanding of product management concepts. You can leverage technologies like ChatGBT to significantly help you when building a product. Then put it on your portfolio so that you can send it around to people. Which leads to number three, network. Find PM events in your city, conferences, workshops, and meet like-minded people and learn from them. Don't be afraid to ask for advice or mentorship. And also reach out to existing PMs on LinkedIn to learn about their experience, which eventually may lead to a referral. Number four is to stay up to date with industry trends. Keep an eye on emerging tech and trends that can impact product management and develop a habit of continuous learning. PMs are known to be super curious individuals, so start to think about how you can increase your curiosity. Number five is to develop your storytelling skills. A great APM can articulate their ideas clearly and persuasively. Practice explaining complex concepts in simple terms and really develop the art of storytelling. Number six is to learn how to analyze data. Get really familiar with data analytics tools like Google Analytics or SQL and understand how data-driven decisions can really shape the success of a product. Number seven is to consider volunteering for product-related roles or getting a PM internship. Offer your skills to nonprofits or startups where you can gain hands-on experience and contribute to real-world projects that you can eventually put on your resume and portfolio. If you're interested in becoming an APM, I teach people exactly how to stand out in the application process by creating an amazing product portfolio. You'll get access to the template I use for my portfolio and I share exactly what to include on it. You'll also join my PM Slack community where you can DM me questions you have about the process. If you're interested in learning more, check out the link in the description. Otherwise, learn more about product from my other videos and good luck becoming an associate product manager.